In our previous video, we talked about the five different types of isomers that are found in organic chemistry, and we mentioned that there are two subsets. One is structural and one is stereochemical. This video is going to focus on the structural isomer known as a skeletal isomer. These ones are only for things that are alkanes. Other videos will talk about the other four types of isomers. As mentioned in the previous video, there are two categories of isomers, the structural isomers and the stereochemical isomers, and five classes of isomers. In this video, we're going to focus on the structural isomer known as a skeletal isomer. As is suggested by its name, skeletal isomers differ in how the carbon skeleton is bonded. As mentioned earlier, isomers have the same number of carbons, hydrogens, and such. They have the same molecular formula. But in this case, a skeletal isomer is one that differs in the arrangement of the atoms in the carbon skeleton. So we're looking specifically at the carbon skeleton, and we're going to see how it's attached differently. Let's look at the isomers of C4H10, also known as butane. These isomers will not necessarily be butane, but they will be related to it. To make a skeletal isomer, what we're going to start with is the straight chain. So we'll put our four carbons in a line, and then we'll attach the hydrogens, and that's butane. For the next isomer, what you're going to do is you take three of the four carbons, and you move one carbon in by one carbon. So looking at this, we now have a methyl propane. Again, no numbers, because we don't need to add the number when there's only one place it could be. To get the whole structure, we'll add in the hydrogens. Now if I try to move the carbon over one more, you should see that we go back to being butane again. Notice that sometimes, while it looks like a shorter chain, it is sometimes just a bend. Beware of those. Now let's look at the skeletal isomers of C5H12, sometimes called pentane, isomers of pentane. We start with our five carbons in a line, and that's our pentane. The next one, we're going to take our five carbons, we're going to chop one off of the end and move it in one carbon. We now have 2-methylbutane. If I move that over one carbon, we still have 2-methylbutane. That is not another isomer. And if I put that carbon on the last one, you'll see that we return to pentane, an isomer that we already found. So that is not an isomer. Now let's try another one. We're going to take off one more carbon, so we're down to a 3-carbon chain. We're going to have two carbons to attach to it. We'll put the first carbon on the center carbon, and now we'll put the second carbon on the center carbon. Notice that if we had placed the carbon on one of the two ends, that it would return to a 2-methylbutane that we've seen above. We now have a 3-carbon chain with two methyl groups on it. This is going to be called 2,2-dimethylpropane. That is a new isomer. We haven't seen that before. Now let's see if there's any others. If I try to put this one off the end and put it on the top, nope, I got 2-methylbutane again. If I try to take it off the end and put it on the bottom, I have 2-methylbutane again. So you can see that we're not coming up with any other structures, and so we are done. We have three skeletal isomers of C5H12. First, I'm going to erase all of the extras. Then we'll focus on the three that we have. We're going to add in those hydrogens. But notice that we can tell we have a skeletal isomer by just looking at the carbon skeleton. You don't need to draw in the hydrogens to see that these are the same basic structure with just the skeleton changed. Finally, let's do letter C, the skeletal isomers of C6H14, also known as hexane. First one is our six carbons in a row. That's hexane. We're going to take one off of the end, put it in by one carbon, we now have 2-methylpentane. We go over one more carbon, and we see that we now have 3-methylpentane. If I go over one more carbon, I go back to being 2-methylpentane, because now I'm counting backwards. That is not an isomer then, because it's already the same. Now we go over one more carbon, and that goes back to hexane. So again, we're not going to have an isomer. So I've tried all of those options. Now I'm going to take off another carbon. We're going to put two of them on. So now we're going to put the both on carbon number two. We cannot put it on carbon one because that's already been done. Place both of those methyl groups onto carbon number two. 
and now we see we have 2,2-dimethylbutane. And I'm going to move over those groups one at a time. I'll move one over. I now have a 2,3-dimethylbutane. If I move the other one over now, we end up with 2,2-dimethylbutane, just counted backwards. So that means we've gone back to the same compound we had before. There's no more compounds that we can do. If we try moving the carbon over one more, we'll end up with, again, 3-methylpentane, going back to one of the chains that we've seen before. Notice that as you're doing this, you're moving them over one at a time, and then if you hit a repeat, you'll find that you're probably at the end of the group. You may want to move it all the way back and see if you can hit another position. The other thing is that if you start going into going back to another longer chain, that tells you that you're hit the end of the line. Notice that in both of these cases, the next step then would be top off another carbon and try again. And so that's what we'll do on the next set. So let's try that. We'll take off one more carbon and try to place it on each position. That means that we should be down to three carbons in the main chains, so they will be types of propanes. Let's go ahead and add those carbons on. So we'll put one in the middle, another one on the other, middle side, and now we're going to have to put that third one in. Where should we put it? Well, if we put it on the end, we have a butane. Put it on the other end, we have another butane. So that means we have to put it on the middle carbon. Let's put it on that middle carbon. Oh, can't do that because it's already got four bonds. So let's put it at the top. Well, guess what? That's another form of a butane. And if we put it on the bottom carbon, again, we're going back to a butane. So no matter what we do, we cannot get anything with just three carbons in a row when we have six carbons total. It always ends up with a longer chain length. That means that we're done looking for skeletal isomers. These are the five skeletal isomers of hexane that we found. Notice that when I drew them, I drew them as just a skeleton, just the carbon chain. That makes it a lot easier to find the different isomers, to see the different isomers, and to be able to name the compounds. After you've drawn the structures and named them, then is a good time to add in the hydrogens. So that's what we'll do now. Notice that as we're adding the hydrogens, we always make sure that every carbon has four bonds. So the first one currently has one bond. We're going to add three hydrogens to it. The second carbon has two bonds. We add two hydrogens. The third one, fourth and fifth, all have two bonds. So we're going to add two to each of those. And the last one has one bond, so we'll add three hydrogens. When we look at 2-methylpentane, we see that the first carbon has only one bond, so it needs three hydrogens. The next one has three bonds, so it only needs one hydrogen. And we continue that throughout the rest of these to make sure that every carbon has a total of four bonds and no more. And as a final reminder, when you're drawing these structural formulas, you want to make sure that those carbons are connected to each other and not to some random hydrogen or in some weird spot. So always make sure that the line goes from carbon to carbon, and then we attach the hydrogens on there. Now there are some places where it gets very tight. You may have to make that a little bit of an angle when you add your hydrogens in. They may not go straight in. So you might see it a little bit of an angle, and that's okay because you drew your skeleton first, so you may have to have those tilted hydrogens.